Uh, anyway, I'm gonna find uh, a taxi now and let's see. Uh, I don't know what this process is like. Uh, maybe I have to just. Yeah, yeah, taxi, huh? Taxi? Yes. Yeah, hey, uh, you take. Uh, you take credit card? Everything but Christmas cards. Okay. Credit card, no problem. No problem, okay. Thank you. Okay, sir. Actually, this is my first time in uh, in Iceland. Okay, so we shall start with five tips, which is very important for you to know. All right. Are you ready? Yes, I am. So, number one on that list is you never need to buy water. Okay. So, uh, the cold water from the tap wherever you are staying is very clean. Okay. And if you make it run for four or five minutes, it gets colder and colder. Because when the pipes come into the house, often the hot and the cold come together, but outside they are separate. So make it run for four minutes, it gets colder. Okay, four minutes, okay. Yeah, and uh, it's more pleasant to heat up the cold water than use the warm water, you know, because of the sulfur smell from the warm water. All right, good to know. Okay, so number two, and people always find that interesting coming from a taxi driver, but you never need to tip anybody. No tips. <laughs> you don't need That's, to. Uh, you know, if you come from America, it's like embedded in your brain. To I know, it's a, it's a culture thing. It's a culture thing and, and more than that, because some of the people that are working, or, you know, like in America, part of the wages are the tips. Yeah. But, but not in Iceland and the European countries, it's, people have their wages. So. Yeah, they get paid very well. So they I don't heard. rely on the tips. Yeah. You know. So. Just uh, look at it it's like it in, in, included. It's the easiest. Yeah. So, so no tips and uh, and don't buy water. You don't need to. Yeah. You can if you want, but uh, you don't need to. What about the taste? I heard that it tastes a little bit. Uh, the water. Yeah. Tastes a little bit different. It's actually a very good taste. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. I can promise you that. Mm. I was driving before, you know, women they were taking me to the so you, marathon. They love the water. So you guarantee I'm not gonna get sick if I... Uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right, that's good to know. It's never, you know, even, you know, people that go to the river streams, they can drink the water from there. You know, I travel a lot. Yeah. I travel to so many parts in the world. The first thing I do yeah. is buy water. <laughs> and there's another thing you should you know? do when you come to a new country. Yeah, you buy water. <laughs> no, you should get a yogurt from that country. Because then you get part of the uh, like uh, bacteria, so it's uh, it's part of uh, you build know, the immune system. Yeah, it's help the immune system. Just Interesting to, to take a yogurt. So yogurt, uh, yeah, yeah. So number three on that list is well, you never need to change your currency. You can pay everywhere with credit card or debit card. Hmm. And number four, um, because you are staying 18 days. It makes a lot of difference where to shop. Like you need to go probably to a supermarket one time or another. Yeah. And there are two shops we shop in the most. One is called Corona and one is called Bonus. And I will okay. point them out to you when we drive past them. They have the best prices. But we have one more you probably know, but that is just in Reykjavik area. Yeah. And we are quite happy with that one because that one lowered petrol prices for us. Yeah. And that is Costco. Costco, okay. Yeah, you know Costco. But that's in only in uh, Reykjavik area. Yeah, it's just in Reykjavik area. Yeah. And, um, and number... Where were we? <laughs> number five now. Yeah. So that's the last one I, which I think is quite important. Always keep your receipts. You know, because it's like when I'm taking diesel for my, my car, I'm paying for the roads, you know. And uh, when you uh, and when I pay like 45 to 50 percent of my wages, I'm pay paying for the welfare system. But when you come to visit Iceland and you keep your receipts, maybe part of this, um, you know, VIT tax, which is 24.5 percent in Iceland, maybe part of that you can get returned to you when you go, yeah. go away. But that's only if I buy. Uh if I buy like clothes and uh, okay, now you know more than something I that uh, no, no, I'm just asking. Is yeah. it uh, is it for everything, including the no, food? No, 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 it's not for everything. But you should Google it because it's maybe more than you think it is. Huh. So uh, yeah. So uh, I would at least Google it because I 
very often see people, you know, in the tax refund at the airport. And uh, so you should Google what can I claim back for VIT in Iceland, you know. I see. It's a beautiful country here, huh? Oh, thank you. Yeah. We are quite happy with it. <laughs> Even though the volcano erupts now and again. Is it still active or yeah, yeah. Uh, is they, it? They, well, um, yeah, it's and it's going to be active, I think. Uh, yeah, they, they, they were talking about they wouldn't, uh, you know, erupt, but uh, I was sure about it would erupt and it erupted. Hmm. And then they were talking about that the other day it was going to stop, but uh, I think this will go on more or less for six years. So this is just beginning. So when I drive the ring road, um is Google Map uh, a good uh, a good map to Yeah, yeah, uh, Google Map is good, but uh, to follow or uh, Yeah, yeah. That is, but I would uh, have a second option. I would have the Waze app. Oh, Waze app, huh? Yeah, because uh, the, you know, Google own Waze today. But there's a reason why they bought Waze, and it's because well, I can actually show you. Do you see the uh, screen here? Yes. So Waze is spelled like this. doesn't show that, huh? No. And uh, uh, not the last time I checked. Yeah. Uh, so, and there's another thing. It tells you about all the speed cameras on the road. And if something, let's say there's, uh, you know, they are fixing the road or something, then you can actually put in information and other drivers can. So oh, okay. that is quite helpful, you know. And I think that's why Google bought it, because you can have more options in this one than in Interesting, but uh, but it doesn't tell you whether the the uh, the road is a gravel gravel road or uh, well, you I'm know, not or sure not, right? about that. But you will see. So there are a few things you need to know. Number one, you cannot turn right on a red line like you do in America. Oh, okay, that's good to know. All right. Okay. Uh, number two, there are these roundabouts. There are not many of them, but there are sometimes double roundabouts. Yes. And it's better to be in the inner circle on the left lane on because left lane. Uh, when you give the signal out, everybody in the outer circle has to wait for you to go out. Hmm. Uh, but if you are taking the first exit out, you need to be in the outer circle. So hmm. you cannot be in the inner circle and take the first exit. So, but if you are taking the second or the third, it's safer to be in the inside. You will get it right away when you see it. Um, and uh, there are sometimes these triangle signs on the side of the road uh, that gives you, uh, like, if you see stone coming from a tire of a car, where the sign is like that, yeah. then you know you are going into a gravel road. Oh. You won't miss that sign. It's a, it's a sign that shows stone coming from the tire of the car. Then you just need to slow down to, like, 40 or 50, you know, if you're driving 90. Because the attraction is, is not as good. Yeah. And um, if you see a, a sign which is uh, the road is getting narrow, then you are probably coming to a bridge which can just handle one car. You know, it's not a double bridge. So you just need to look at the bridge and see if somebody is coming over. You wait. If nobody is coming over and, and you are the first to the bridge, they wait. You know. So, but it's no problem. There's not many bridges like that. I think it's very good for you to, you know, you drive on the our side of the street, so it's not so complicated to drive in Iceland. But when you go outside Reykjavik, there are not too many cars around, so... so there are not too many, okay. Yeah. How is, uh, how is uh, COVID uh, doing uh, 
about it because they were talking about it in the news yesterday. Yeah. That uh, they maybe have to change some things because, uh, you know, there have been some uh, people that have become sick, but not seriously, you know, because 90% of a nation is vaccinated. But nevertheless, they, they probably have to step back a little bit because it was open to 5 o'clock in the morning, the dancing places so they are going to have some restrictions again unfortunately but so uh, cases are going up then well it's going to be until 12th of august they're going to uh, announce it today what are the you know restrictions but 12th of august they're going to renew that view maybe it's going to be open up a more you know, yeah so you see the lava all around us here <laughs> There are lava fields all around us. Oh wow! They are quite. Uh, they are between one and three thousand years old. This is a volcano cave out there. Not too many trees in this uh, between Kaplavik and Reykjavik. And if you are hiking in Iceland, and we don't have any dangerous animals in the wild. We, oh okay. We have the Arctic fox, who is a beautiful animal. We call them laufota, but in English it would be like low feet. They have uh, lower feet than the British fox. <laughs> you know, they are smaller. Um, they change this color in the winter time. So they get white in the winter, but they are brown in the summer. And the small ones are black. And, and then we have lynx. They, they came from Norway. They are wild in Iceland and reindeers in the east. But there are no snakes, no bears, no cockroaches, no ants. Yeah, they're not, they're not dangerous for No, no, no. That's good to know. So no problem hiking in Iceland. You know, in, in California, I have to be uh, conscientious all the time uh, of where I'm going because we have uh, some mountain lions. Yeah, wow. Mountain yeah. lions and some... Uh, some hiking trails yeah the big cats yeah the big cats yeah, yeah. you know so uh, yeah every time I see a sign warning sign it you know it makes me a little bit uh, yeah, anxious, you know? yeah 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 they put that up for a reason yes yes sir. And, uh, you know uh, do you know a lot about Iceland Know, like history history wise and not not a lot so I can tell you a little bit if you want yeah so uh, they say that people came to Iceland between eight and nine hundreds and uh, there were actually people here before there were Irish monks Papar called but um, the Vikings they came early on they were quite smart actually they, they registered people we have what we call the Icelandic book which is um, what can I say? It's like you can trace your family line, over, or some people can trace the family line all the back to 900s, you know, through this Icelandic book because of this registration in the beginning. And, uh, and we, they formed parliament early on, so we have the oldest parliament in the world. That's from where the national park is, right? And yeah, national yeah, park. yeah. That's uh, Think of it. Think of it. But if you read the history of Iceland, you have to read many books to to actually read between the lines because they are not all agreeing on the same things. And for example, with the oldest parliament, there were two older parliaments than that parliament. There was Tostesting and Kjalnesting. But uh, the parliament for all of Iceland was definitely the one in Thingvelli for 930. Yeah. So we were an independent nation for a period of time. But then Norway came along and overtook us, so we lost our independence to Norway. And uh, we got our independence back, but later Denmark came and overtook us. Oh, so again we lost our independence. And I think uh, maybe pe many people like Sweden because they have never tried to overtake us. But uh, Was it like a war? Or they, they, they took over? Uh, we like were not so many or? people, they were actually just... Uh, easy for them to overtake us at that time oh, okay. but but um, yeah so we were under Denmark for a, a long time and actually in 1939 we were still under Denmark 
and uh, then the British army came to Iceland. They knew it was in the plan of the German army to overtake Iceland. Yeah. And uh, because of the distance to America, Canada and Europe, we are like in the middle. Yeah, yeah, and I know that part, yeah. Yeah, and then the Americans took over 41. And, and they built the airport. They, yeah, they built out there. That's why yeah. the international airport is out there. But uh, we claimed our independence and, and the Danes didn't want to stand in a, in a way. So formally we got our independence in 17th of June 1944. Some oh. people claim it was earlier, but it was actually, I think, in 17th of June 1944. It's a pretty um, new country though. Well, it's uh, always been, you know, but uh, yeah. yeah, so independence not so long time ago. And, uh, you know, the size of Iceland, it's a fairly big country. It's like uh, over 70% of the size of England. And in England, it's about 70 million. In Iceland, we are 365,000. So, you have a lot of space. You have a lot of space and less population. Is that good thing or bad thing? What it's do you a, think? It's a good thing. Uh, it's a good thing, huh? Yeah, yeah, I would say so because, you know, what can I say? But economy-wise, you need more people to, to keep well, the economy actually, we uh, are, going, right? We are very lucky in many ways. We have big fishing grounds outside Iceland. We have always protected them. It's always been the lifeline of Iceland. And uh, then we have agriculture. We, have, we, of course, have the warm water. We heat our homes and make electricity by it. And uh, we have the cold, good cold water. So... Um, yeah, it's all green energy in Iceland. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, so uh, in many, many ways, we can actually grow everything, even though we import a lot of things because there are so many people coming uh, to Iceland. But we have the good soil, the cold water, the, the cheap electricity and the warm water. So in greenhouses, uh, you can find Icelandic strawberries and tomatoes, you know. Then we have all these animals like uh, horses, cows, bulls, you know, yeah. goats, yeah, sheep. So, uh, and, uh, but uh, you know, Reykjavik is the only city in Iceland. So we are going to Reykjavik, and uh, the most populated area of Iceland. So to be able to call a place a city, it needs uh, 100,000 people to live there. And Reykjavik is the only place to call. It's 144. And then Reykjavik area and the neighboring towns are four independent towns around Reykjavik. And together it's about 220,000 people last time I knew. So, um, yeah, most of the people living in a very small part of the island. But you see the weather, how it is here. It's actually, you know, uh, up north and in the east is totally different. And. Uh, some people say it's because of the volcanic activity, it gets colder and uh, it manages to block the sunlight, you know, the, uh, the, the uh, clouds and uh, what yeah. comes from this uh, volcanic area. And so it's kind of foggy all the time now and, uh, and the temperature are dropping, you see it's just 8.5 degrees. In normal, you know, day in this time of the year, it would be like 15 at this time in the morning. Huh. So, yeah. But if you go up north, just three days ago it was 25. I'm uh, concerned sunny... about the wind, though. Sorry? I, I heard I heard the wind. It can be, yeah, yeah it it's can be windy. quite windy. Yeah, it can be. And uh, But it's not been so windy this summer. It's been windy in the area where the volcano is. But, oh, okay. uh, yeah, you can have very strong winds and, uh, and the rain can be, uh, you know, going almost upwards, you know, because the wind pushes it up. So how long have you been working uh, at the airport, uh, taxi at the airport? Uh, I've been, um, that's a good question. <laughs> I've been working as a taxi driver for over 30 years. Over 30 years? Yeah, but I've been working on the sea too and, and do this and that like many people of Iceland do. And, uh, so, so when has the tourism uh, become so popular? Uh, it become, was always uh, some tourism because like uh, you can say each season has a charm. It's like uh, people come here in the winter time when we don't have so much daylight. Like December is the shortest daylight we have 
Well, the shortest day we have is 22nd of December, and then it's bright around 11 o'clock in the morning and dark after 3.30 in the day. That's not a good uh, time to visit, huh? Uh, well, we have the Northern Lights, the Aurora Borealis, which are quite beautiful. Yeah. And, uh, you know, but uh, then in January it goes into six hour brightness, so it's never too long darkness, you know. So it's two, three months that are kind of tough for some people. Yeah. But we, they're accustomed to it, it's no problem at all for us. But uh, but then the summer times come and like 22nd of June, yeah. it's almost 24 hour sunlight. Wow. A lot of people come to play midnight golf in Iceland. You know, the what Arctic about now? Open. What about now? Is it still... Uh... No, it's not going to be totally dark, it's going to be like dusk, I believe. Uh, Maybe for like three hours because now the day is getting shorter again. But it will not go get as uh, as dark as you saw in the video before. So eleven o'clock, uh, eleven o'clock at night. So uh, I can still enjoy the nature, go out and yeah, yeah, see. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's not dark yet. No, yeah. No, no. I would think it's around twelve o'clock to uh, one to three o'clock. It gets bright again. So. But it, it won't get totally pitch black, it's not, it won't get that. Mm. No complete darkness? No, no. no. And you know, uh, the people of Iceland, we speak the old language. So, uh, people of Norway call it Old Norsk. Okay. So we can uh, usually, without problems, read the old books. But then again, we know that nobody understands us, so we need to speak other languages. So everybody here speaks English more or less. Yeah, you speak really good though. Uh, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, last year uh, the taxi business was suffering, correct? Yes. Or because of uh, the yeah. lockdown and the pandemic and all. Yeah, that is true. Travel restrictions. And many businesses actually. So, But uh, we have a good welfare system. So the government paid people just to, to see them through. And, uh, if they were paying big loans, they could stop these loans and just pay the interest of them. And, uh, so it's a good system in Iceland, you know. Do they still have that system, the welfare yeah, yeah. system? or they, uh... they have that system. And, uh, it was actually a problem in the beginning after they started to open up to get people to go out to work because people had it so good at home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're getting lazy, huh? Yeah, people are yeah. getting a little bit lazy. Yeah. But there were so many... You know, what can I say, good things about this COVID situation. You saw very unlikely people go out walking and, uh, and uh, you know, doing things they didn't do before, maybe. Is the business now back to normal? Uh, uh, I would say it's, uh, yeah, it's actually, it has been uh, even better than normal. Oh, really? Yeah, but uh, then again, some are uh, exploring the situation and we don't like that. It's what like, do you the, mean? like the car rental companies in Iceland. Uh, we are not so happy with them. They, they put the prices up and up and up and up and up. So uh, it was actually not so long time ago I was driving people that were coming uh, to stay in Iceland for 40 days. Yeah. And uh, they booked through Booking, you know, the website Booking. Yeah. And. Uh, and when they came, they had cancelled their their uh, car, the, the car rental company, because uh, they had higher prices for the car rentals or something like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I and heard these, about that, yeah. And these people had booked, you know, stayings here or there in Iceland, you know, for these days. They were been planning their trip. And uh, they were just devastated because they were thinking maybe just staying three days or something because then they had to cancel the bookings and it's just because of these car rentals they are spoiling things for you know other people they are yeah. renting homes or renting you know uh, for these people so i just pointed them uh, out to them they could go to an icelandic website it's called blunt and they could just buy a car for actually lower price than they were renting this car <laughs> and they end up doing that so so they were okay yeah but uh we don't like when car rentals do this because it's unethical to... I'm renting from this company, it's called the Blue... Uh, Blue you heard car about rental? It? Yeah, yeah, Blue Car Rental. Yeah, that, that, that was... Uh, I hope... Yeah, I, I, that should be okay, you know. Yeah. 
because it was just kind of crazy just two weeks ago. But I think it's back to normal more now. Mm. You know, so it's not quite as crazy. As you know, the airport was so busy, so many people. Yes, it is. It so is. many people. Yeah. That should be good business for you, huh? Yeah, yeah, it is actually. And uh, because uh, I can tell you that one of the taxi drivers, he got an offer just to, because he, they said to him, these people, they wanted him to drive him around for five days and just pay him like 500,000 for five days. Mm. Because it was actually lower than renting a car to have a professional driver because there were two of them But he was so busy he couldn't take it, but you know It tells you all about the car rental companies So most of your customers are from the US? No, no, they're, they're uh -huh. in the morning uh, the, the planes come in from the US, Canada uh, We're usually US now In the morning, okay uh, Early morning, very mm. early morning Between 5 and, and, and 7, 8 and uh, then the European planes come a little bit later. Uh, planes from uh, all the other countries. And I can actually show you. So Reykjavik is really uh, far from the airport, huh? It's about 50 kilometers away. You see here, here is Komur. And I, if I make them show, show everything, then uh, this was early in the night, and here you see it starts uh, Iceland there, Orlando, Boston, Seattle, Denver, New York, and then you come later in the morning, you see how many, then in London, Oslo, Copenhagen, Hamburg, Oslo, oh, wow. London, Tel Aviv, Paris. Even Tel Aviv. Africa. Yeah, yeah, many, many, many. Many you know. people. But uh, early morning, American flights, later morning, the other countries. I was telling you about Kronan and Bonus. You see here on the left hand side, one of the Kronan stores, they open uh, 9 to 9, so 9 to 21, like they say. Kronan. Yeah. They have good prices. And there is Wien Pudding. So if you want to buy beer or alcohol, you need to go to a wine store. They don't sell it in the supermarket. And there you see Bonus, for example. See, see the difference, you know, we often have the saying, you probably have the same saying, if you don't like the weather, drive one hour. Yeah. You see, it's uh, kind of different here. You know, I always hear that um, Iceland is so expensive. Well, um, it, is, it is quite expensive, but then again, you know, it depends on how you look at it. You know, well, it's like when you come from America, I think many countries are expensive. You know, mm. you go to Europe and all that. But uh, when you look at it like, you know, you don't need to tip anybody. Um, you know, we import a lot of things to Iceland. And uh, you will get a little bit of shock when you take petrol or diesel. Because it's uh, two to three times more expensive than in America. Than in America. But then again, we we think it's very cheap in America, you know. But it, it's like if you're working in Iceland, you have good wages. And uh, it's probably the thing, you know, it's like if you go to Vietnam, for example, everything is very, very cheap. But if you are working in Vietnam, the wages are not good for you, you know. But then again, they are enough to support you, you know. So, so it's a little bit like that. It's, uh, you know, expensive for people maybe to visit, but if they are working, it's, it's you know, they get good wages compared to... For example, if you go to Greenland, that's much more expensive than Iceland. Have but, you been to Greenland? Uh, I have flown over Greenland, but I know people that have been in Greenland. But uh, you understand that when you see that there are no cars, everybody go by boats or, or uh, some other, you know, ways. So, and they import everything. More or less. We have many of these 24 hour opening time stores. There is Hagkirk, Iceland, and many, many, many 24 later. hours, you say? Yeah, okay. open 24 hours. Mm. So we've been driving through Hafnafjörður. This is Karlabær. And then comes Kopavogur, and then comes Reykjavik, and in the west end of Reykjavik is Central and it's If I go to a D 
decent restaurant and I get a, a meal, what's the average price? Uh, oh, that, you should always check before you go to the restaurants. Um, but I can tell you the quality of food is very good in Iceland. Yeah. And food culture has changed a lot. In uh, about 30 some years we always have this food and fun in Mars every year. There's a lot of chefs coming to Iceland to have like a friendly competition. And, it's very good for us to go out to eat without paying big prices for the food and good for them to see what the other best chefs are doing. But uh, yeah, I would say quality is always good. And, uh, one of the places I know is one of the best restaurants in Iceland. It's called Appleton. And uh, it's not a Michelin restaurant, but the food is amazingly good there. But Appleton means pharmacy. Bought the old pharmacy of Reykjavik, but they didn't want to change the name, so it's the only place which is a restaurant. Huh. There are many, many good restaurants. You know, Tapas is one the Spanish name for a small course, but you know, there are many good ones. And if you like traditional food, there's Salcavalca and Loki and others. But uh, I would stay away from the fermented shark and the stingray though. It's terrible food. <laughs> it's uh, from the Viking times. Oh, okay. And, uh, they say it's a learned taste, but I can tell you, you have to be learning for a very long time to like it, I think. But the meat soup and uh, the fish stew with the brown bread before plop is good. That's very good. And what kind of food do you like? I like healthy food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know. But you're not like vegetarian, or um, or uh, do you eat meat? And I fish? am. Uh, I try to eat less meat. I'm yeah, try, I, I try to eat more uh, vegetables, but I do. I do eat meat, yeah, but yeah. not too much. Okay. I am. I, I try to eat yeah. more uh, vegetables yeah, and uh, fruits that. and. Uh, yeah. There are, you know, like this yeah. meat soup. It's uh, full of vegetables. It gives you a lot of energy. Many vegetarian places too. What about Mediterranean food? Yeah, we have places from all around the world. You know, you, you can find uh, places from India, Asia, you know, mm. Italy, you know, wherever. Just name it, you probably will find that place. And then you're talking about what country, for example? Oh, they have also uh, they have also food for a specific country. Yeah, there are uh, many, many. Let's you say, know. let's say Turkey. Turkey, there's probably yeah, there are Turkey restaurants like Safran or Lebanon. Um, Lebanese. I would, yeah, I, I would say there are um, like Manti. You know, there are many different different. Just Google it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. If you Google, you know, Turkey's place in Iceland, restaurant in Iceland, or, oh, you know, you will probably find some results. We're getting close, huh? Yeah, we're getting closer. And you know, in Reykjavik, there are many camera boxes. Probably oh. about 40 boxes or 50 or something, but I just have 10 cameras, so you never know if it's a camera in the box or the box is empty, so... People just slow down when they see a camera box on the traffic uh -huh. light. Because they rotate the cameras. Sometimes it's in this one, but sometimes not. So how do you know if the camera catch you or not? How do uh, you know? If you're driving too fast and you forget to smile, and it takes a picture, you know. Oh, so, so yeah, you see the, the light. You see the light. Uh, yeah, oh. yeah, you will see the light. Some are for, you know, if you are driving too fast, the other one, if you drive over on a red light, or, you know. So. Interesting. But there are many places we have sensor lights, you know, and people often don't know uh, to drive on the sensors, which are close to the stop line. So uh, you don't need to, like in the night, very often you drive on a sensor and your light comes in very quickly. But the good thing is, I think with people in Iceland that 
when we see people are renting a car we usually see the sticker in the the back window so we try not to peep on the, those people you know because we know people are coming to have a good time in Iceland yeah and uh, <clears throat> so we learn like to count to ten before we do something like that <laughs> so you know, people don't feel like panicking too much So after 8 o'clock in the morning the sensors are not working because otherwise we have greened a long time ago. But it's coming now. And these streets here in Reykjavik they have the name of the Vikings, like this is Eriksgata. And the next one is Leifsgata. And uh, you know, it's like the Viking Leif Eriksson. And there's a statue of him in front of the church and we still have this name system you know we have we have our father's, uh, father's name in the end of our name you probably have some of those yeah 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 we we, we have a lot Call it sleeping police. <laughs> that is the. Uh... This is the church Hallgrims uh, Kirkja. So Kirkja is a church. I heard I can, uh, I can go all the way up, right? Yeah, there is yeah. A, you can, there's an elevator, and then you have to walk the rest. You, uh... Gives you a good view of the city. Is this place a walking distance from uh, yeah, the yeah, hotel yeah. where yeah, yeah. I'm going to? Yeah, and there is one of the traditional food places, Loki. And uh, here you see the statue of Leif Eriksson. And here is a street with a difficult no name for people to pronounce. It's Kola Vördustigur. But underneath the street here and the sidewalks there are heat pipes. So this never gets slippery here. You know, I'm going to have a hard time pronouncing the... Uh, the streets and the towns and the cities and yeah don't worry about it it's, <laughs> but the ways they even try to do it you know it's very funny with the ways they try to put the Icelandic names but look back out of the back window to the church if you turn around in your seat yeah because many people they they actually like to go down the street to take a picture of the church because if you look look back it's more beautiful from down the street right? yeah and too close to yeah, because uh, you're looking up and... Yeah. Like somebody described it uh, like a stairway to heaven to go up here. So, and here is the Rainbow Street. We turn right. You see down here? The Rainbow right. Street, okay. Yeah, over the Rainbow Street. This is Laugavegur, actually the street that he was staying at. Is that a busy street? This is actually, the cars are not allowed to drive down there, but early in the morning they do sometimes, if they are bringing like uh, products for the places. But this is a walking street in the daytime. And, uh, yeah. So we are going to Frón, so we go up here with a street called Klappastígur. And then we go left next. to drive usually but I'm driving here anyway just to get you to your hotel so hotel front is over here hotel front is over here yes sir thank you very much